I managed to integrate my dryer into my smart home without spending an extra 500 pounds. Instead, I purchased this Wi-Fi relay called Shelly 1 PM, PM stands for power monitoring, for around 15 pounds. So why actually integrate it into a smart home? Well, first of all, I can actually find out when my dryer is running and when it actually finishes and I can enable notifications either to my phone or to a Google home speaker, which will actually the tell me when the finished. cycle is finished. I can also see the status from my wall panel that you can see over here. Bear in mind that you can apply this logic to any appliance that you have in your home. But now, let's roll the intro. First thing, we need to get the Shelly 1 PM Plus integrated into our electrical circuit. So we're gonna to need to do some electrical work. Now, if you're not competent with electrical work, please be careful, this is quite dangerous. What I'm gonna show you right now is a wiring proposal, so please discuss this with a certified electrician in your jurisdiction. Double sockets in the UK have three main wires. We have a neutral wire, normally blue, the earth wire, and the life wire, which is brown. Now, adding in the Shelly 1PM in the picture, you can see that the live that originally was going into the socket, which you can see over here in the other diagram, now is actually wired from the output of the Shelly device. And you can see that where the live used to come in to L, now it's going into one of these three, and specifically this one, one of these three um, L inputs. So you can put them in either three. The Shelly 1PM Plus has three, but if you're using an older Shelly 1PM, uh, that will be fine also. We also need a neutral wire. Now the neutral wire, we're still keeping this feeding into the original double socket. And then what we need to do basically is a little junction and then have it coming into one of the two end poles in the Shelly 1PM. We don't touch the earth wire, so we can just leave that as it is. So as you can see, really with this design, we're done. So what you can do now is through the Shelly 1PM, you can control the socket so you can turn it on and turn it off at the same time. Now bear in mind that here in the UK, we also have rocker switches on each one of these. So you're gonna to need to have them always on if you want the Shelly to turn off and turn on. You can have the Shelly on and then these rockers off, but obviously no electricity will go by. So just to bear in mind. We talked about how we can control this device now. We can control it with a mobile phone, we can use the Shelly app, and that basically is free to download and we're going to need it anyway to configure the device from a software point of view. But then also we can integrate it in smart home solutions like Home Assistant, where we can then use things like a wall panel and text-to-speech. But sometimes you just want a physical rocker, physical switch, so you can actually control the outlet from where you are. So right here we have the optional rocker switch. So imagine you have a switch and sometimes what you do is, because there's not enough space in the original uh, back box, you can have another back box, put the Shelly 1 PM inside there, and then basically have the rocker switch. And the rocker switch needs to be rewired to SW, which is the switching unit on the Shelly 1 PM. And we need to take a feed, uh, like you see over here from the live, and then bring it into this little rocker switch. So that basically means that you are able to control the Shelly 1 PM from the wall. So how does this little device communicate with everything else in my smart home? So let's start from the dryer itself, which you can see over here. Now this is connected into the socket, and this could be one gang, two gang socket. Now behind the socket, you've seen the wiring to the Shelly device. The energy monitoring is gonna look at how much consumption the appliance is pulling from the socket. So we can do smart things like figuring out if it's completely, if it's drying or washing, or if it's standby mode and we can do different uh, calculations based on that. And I'll talk to you a bit more about that later on in the video. Your Shelly device needs to access your Wi-Fi. Now I recommend you use an IoT VLAN specifically for networking purposes, it's just more secure. But even if you're not using it, that's okay. So the Shelly device is going to get an IP address. And that IP address, you can actually use a web browser to access the Shelly device and configure certain things like enabling cloud, disabling. I always recommend trying to put these devices on a fixed IP address if you can. So going back to the router, the router then will, will basically push the message on to Home Assistant or directly to your mobile phone which is connected to your own Wi-Fi. If you're skipping Home Assistant and you're just using the Shelly app, which you can if you're just a beginner. And then if you're doing thing, more complicated things like text-to-speech, you can see that Home Assistant over here basically takes in 
the um, messages from the Shelly so it knows how much energy consumption is going on. And then through automations, we can then obviously we'll go to the Google Cloud and give the command to basically give a message. And now your Google Mini, which is sitting over here in your home, can make an announcement, for example, your washing machine is finished, your, you know, your dishwasher is finished, whatever you want. In my example, because I have a double socket behind this device, if another appliance was connected into it, Home Assistant or the Shelly device would not actually know that's a separate device. So if you have two appliances connected to the same double gang switch, that will cause you a problem. So if you need to do this, for example, with a washer and a dryer, and you want control and control them separately to know which one is producing more energy, then you could go through a having a smart plug solution, or you're going to need two, basically you're going to need to spur it off and have two separate ones. I'm not sure if this is the same in the country where you're looking, but let me know in the comment section down below if you do know, and yeah, I'd be much grateful for that. And also, if you're getting value out of this video, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for many more Shelly type videos that are gonna come, be coming soon in the future. I've got a few devices that are just waiting to be installed. For those of you that have never used Shelly before, to actually get Shelly working, you need to download the Shelly app. To add the Shelly device to the app, you can do this in a few ways. The most common way is to do it via Wi-Fi, that's how it used to be before. In the latest devices they've released, they've also got Bluetooth. So if you can use Bluetooth, that's probably easier. So let's jump in the Home Assistant and let's see how this Shelly integration is configured. So scrolling down, go to your devices and services and scroll until you, you find Shelly. Now, if you can't find Shelly auto discovering, you can click add integration and you can actually search for it yourself in the, in the bar over here but you should have it auto discovered. I've already configured it, so just click it over here and then you'll see it pulling in. We have one device specifically and I've renamed this tumble dryer, so rename it depending on what device is connected to it. Technically, this isn't the tumble dryer itself. This is actual the socket behind the tumble dryer. So if you do put something else on it, this could be slightly misleading. So be careful of how you name it because it could confuse you. So let's look at the 13 entities we actually get. So we've got binary sensors in terms of if we have enabled or not a cloud, we can look at to see if there's a firmware update and all other things like sensors. We're looking at the temperature, voltage, uptime, reboot, switch, energy, and power. So the ones you mainly need is the energy and the power, depending if you're doing like cost. So how much did it cost you to run that? A specific run with the washing machine and you can use that information in your announcement if you want to be pedantic you know you know the, the washing machine finished and it took this long and it cost this much you could do that um, if you're interested to actually find out how you know how to do that then let me know in the comment section I might make a video about it in the future but anyway these are the, are the entities that we have through this device now let me jump into my configuration let me show you how I actually configure this. So I've used the template sensor. Now I'm not gonna to go too much into detail of what this does. I made a separate video about it, which I'm gonna link at the end of this video if you wanna go into more detail, or you could just simply pause this video and just copy and paste the code. That is absolutely fine. High level, what I'm doing is I'm using the dryer power, which I showed you earlier, and I'm looking at what is the current power. So if the current power is zero, I'm saying it's off. If it's greater, if it's less than two, so between zero and two, it's on standby. If not, it's drying. So play around with these statuses over here. Once you've got a sensor, you can go back to your developer tools. So first click developer tools and you can see the sensor the tumble dryer is off. So that is what uh, my own device. Now I'm gonna make a little bit of a change to this uh, sensor. I'm gonna add in an icon. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when I add this to the dashboard, I want it to, to look uh, good. So if I just do dash icon, and then I put this column in and then I can use the MDI. So that's the material design uh, icon library. I've got things like washing machine. I don't know if I've got dryer, hair dryer, tumble dryer, tumble dryer alert, tumble dryer off. So I've, I've got this tumble dryer over here. Cool. So we've got this done. Now I'm going to do something slightly more smarter. So I'm going to actually change this icon and use the icon template. And this icon template is gonna be over multiple lines. So I'm gonna put this expression over here and a little minus. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna paste in an example that I had from a previous video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just basically copy this. 
so what we are going to do is we're going to say if if is zero like this one over here then we could use ndi and then we said we had tumble dryer off else what we're we going to do we're going to put tumble dryer on cool so this is all in line so we're going to go to configurations and server control we're going to check our configuration to see if it's all fine cool so that's valid and i'm just going to restart home assistant so that that sensor apply changes then we're going to go and check if it actually did work by trying to add it to the dashboard so i restarted home assistant and there were a couple of things that were wrong to be fair the configuration check was a bit pointless because it did say it was valid but it really wasn't so i had to look at the actual template sensor documentation again and i figured out where i went wrong and i just want to show you I'm also going to leave a link in the description for the template documentation. The first thing I was getting wrong that I was missing the colon over here. So even if you are using the greater than expression, you always need that. The second thing I got wrong that I was using icon underscore template and not just simply icon. Because this is really a template sensor, then you can use icon. Now if you're using, if you have a sensor and you're creating a set template under a sensor, like you can see in this example over here where we have sensor and the platform template being as part of sensor, then you can use the icon underscore template. But in this case, because I've done it the other way, you can't. And then the last thing was to having the icon aligned to the state and the name and not necessarily uh, out slightly. So that's all done now and it's all aligned properly and it's working. So let's go to the dashboard and let's add it in now. So we've got three dots, edit dashboard, and I'm going to be adding it somewhere close around here. Maybe I'm going to replace these three cards and I'll add in uh, this dryer and also a light that I configured in the previous video, the garage light. So you can see the first grid card over here is number one. It has two columns. The first is the lock and the second one is the garage over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue adding another two. So we're going to add our sensor, we can add a button, and this button over here is going to be our dryer. So there's a tumble dryer, you can see it, we've got it. Cool, that's all nice. We can remove the name or we can keep it if we want to. And then the last thing I'm going to add in is a light. And because the light is just a switch, I'm going to use the button card, and I'm going to be using a light dot garage light. The one thing I do want to do when I go to the tumble dryer, I don't really, there's nothing really to toggle. So what you can do is I can do more info as the tap action and I can do other different things like call services. So I can call service and I can do something like uh, switch dot toggle. So we've got it over here, switch tumble dryer. So I'm going to remove this render down square so it comes a little bit uh, smaller so we can see it better. So you can save it. So if I click on the tumble dryer, we can see that it was uh, last changed six minutes ago. This is when I rebooted Home Assistant. And you can see when it actually was working, drying. Um, yeah, standby, you can see sort of how that sort of is going about. You can find out more by doing show more. But ultimately if I'm doing a hard click on it, I can actually toggle it on and off. Now let's jump into the automations. And let's see how we can create an automation. So click add automation. We start with an empty automation. Dryer cycle has finished. So this is basically what we're going to be looking at. What we're looking for is the state. And this example, we're still losing that sensor that we built previously. So sensor tumble dryer. And we're looking from drying to off. Now here you could do off or standby, really up to you how you want to define it. So let's say it has to be uh, off for at least a minute because a minute is like a cool down period, but it's also useful in case there's uh, energy fluctuation in the energy monitoring. So if it goes a bit too low, sometimes it might drop in, in between your cycles. This will depend on your own device and what appliance you're controlling. And here in the action, simply we can do whatever we want. So we can say call service and we can do like things like text to speech. So tts.cloud underscore say is what you use, what I use for Nabucasa. And pick a speaker. I'm going to pick um, the kitchen speaker. 
and here you just put in a message so just say uh, the tumble dryer has finished set your local language and you're done so you're gonna find out a little bit more about templating I'm gonna leave you a link to a playlist here that you can actually play this is Geo from Smarter Makers I hope you enjoyed this video see you in the next one ciao